dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. This weekend, Red Mirror Events hosted the Shelby Mountain Run, showcasing Shelby Mustangs in Pikeville. WYMT's RJ Johnson shares how events like this are great for tourism. This weekend, hundreds of people came out and participated in the Shelby Mountain Run in Pikeville. And they're out here every day driving our beautiful roads, stopping and supporting local businesses. And most and ha most importantly to me, I was giving kids uh, the opportunity to see all these beautiful Shelby Mustangs. Eric Hubbard is the executive director of the Backroads of Appalachia. He says events like this bring in tourism for the region. Since the downturn of Co, we had the infrastructure already in place and we had the best roads in the country. And most importantly, we have the best people with the Appalachian hospitality. And you just put two and two together and you start rediversifying our industry and our economics, bringing people with uh, extra income into our region to get them in our twisty mountain roads, get them tired, thirsty, and hungry where they land and support our local communities. He says it offers a sense of community for people with similar interests. And it's a common ground, common thing that no matter what kind of way of life you come from, you can all get together and appreciate the same thing. And that's just Mustangs, it's supercars, Camaros, motorcycles, and the list goes on. Hubbard says they will continue creating events with hopes of bringing in more people to better serve the community. RJ Johnson, WIMT Mountain News. Hubbard says they have still a lot of events in the upcoming weeks. For more information, you can visit our website, WMT.com. Warm weather continues across the mountains into this evening, and we get even hotter as we get into the upcoming work week. Here's a live look right now from Buffalo Mountain. We are dry under plenty of sunshine. Really nice evening is on tap across the mountains as we go through the rest of your Sunday. Lower 80s at Buffalo Mountain. Most of us right now in the upper 70s to middle 80s in some places. 83 for Irvin, also 83 for Prestonsburg, 81 for Pikeville, and 82 over in Whitley County at Williamsburg at this hour. We're dry on radar for most of us, but we are tracking a new pop-up shower and storm over portions of Morgan County just to the east of West Liberty at this hour. Nothing severe, but a heavier shower nonetheless over portions of Morgan County right now. We are giving you the first alert though for possibly a few showers and storms tomorrow. This is the severe weather outlook for Monday, and as you can see, a level one risk is in place really along and west of Highway 15, also north of the How Rogers Parkway over our northwestern counties. Not looking at a big deal, but possibly a few showers and storms on Monday. As we go through this evening though, most of us are dry and we stay dry as we go into tonight as well. And those temperatures fall into the lower 60s on Monday, but a warm week is on tap. All those details coming up in just a few minutes. Keaton. All right, thanks, Cameron. Back at the beginning of June, climate, climate scientists at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Climate Prediction Center declared that we were entering an El Nino pattern for our weather, bringing global shifts in the climate. Lexa Minton breaks down the specifics and how this weather phenomenon affects Kentucky. El Nino is a natural climate phenomenon marked by warmer than average sea surface temperatures in parts of the Pacific Ocean. And while the Pacific Ocean is hundreds of miles away from us here in Kentucky, we might notice seasonal effects right here in the Commonwealth. Right, the oceans are really big and so they can regulate the, the, the climate of the earth in a lot of really cool ways. And one of the things they do is where the sort of the heat is distributed in the ocean and that's what the El Nino is. In order to best understand El Nino, we need to look at a global scale. Normally, winds called trade winds pushed warm surface waters towards parts of the Western Pacific, centralizing near Asia and Australia. However, in El Nino years, those winds called the trade winds weaken, allowing for all of that warm surface water to really centralize around parts of South America. This can warp our weather pattern and give us different conditions in different seasons. 
We really notice El Nino during the wintertime months where we might see drier conditions specifically in Kentucky, while our friends just south of us might see wetter conditions. Everything's connected, right? You could take a ship and go through all the oceans together. Um, all the weather patterns are all interconnected, uh, but the Pacific Ocean is so incredibly big that when it does, it's natural sort of shifts back and forth in where the different warm water masses are gonna be, what the circulation looks like, it affects the climate across the globe. So as we look forward in our weather predictions for the bluegrass, we'll remind ourselves that the activity far away in the Pacific Ocean can even affect us right here at home. In Lexington, Alexa Minton, WKYT. A boating crash yesterday on Norris Lake near Norris Landing Marina has left one child dead. The two boat collision marking the 18th boating death in Tennessee this year. It's on track to outpace boating deaths from last year. Matt Cameron with Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency says this time of year brings large crowds to the water, leaving waterways congested. Cameron says it's everyone's job to promote and be aware of proper boating safety. Uh, a lot of boats out there sometimes in close proximity to one another and sometimes they do collide because there aren't any uh, traffic lanes, there's no stop signs or traffic lights or signals or anything. There's boats going all directions out there, so it does uh, create some dangerous situations sometimes. TWRA has some advice for people hitting the water. Wear a life jacket at all times. Stored away ones won't really help you in an emergency. Never boat under the influence. Always designate a sober designated driver and be aware of your surroundings. Make sure your driver is paying proper attention. Well, the annual North Fork Music Festival returns next weekend in downtown Hazard on Main Street. Two day event will take place Friday and Saturday with music, food and fun for the whole family. But Bailey Richard says the city is trying to bring a positive note to in the end of an already difficult week for many of us here in eastern Kentucky as we approach the one year anniversary of last July's floods. Yes, we have a few people that are going to be speaking and then we have a song that was written by um, the wonderful musicians that work at the art station. Um, it's kind of a, a positive thinking of, you know, you, there's still a reason to sing even on the rainy days. Gates open at 530 both days and is $10 admission. Richard says the July flood remembrance will take place Friday at about 945 p.m. We first brought you this story earlier this week. Appalachian Regional Healthcare is hosting a school supply drive to aid students impacted by last year's historic flooding. Starting tomorrow and lasting until Friday, folks can drop off school supplies at the ARH Distribution Center here in Hazard. Hazard location will be open every day, 930 until 4 p.m. Donations will also be taken at the Lexington Corporate Office as well. That one's going to be open every day from 8 to 5. Well, an orchard in Versailles, Kentucky is celebrating the beginning of blackberry season. Eckert's Orchard invited folks of all ages to stop by over the weekend and pick fresh blackberries. On Saturday and Sunday, blackberries went for $5.99 per pound, which is what they usually sell for, but the festival included more than just berry picking, making the day an experience for the whole family. So the past two days we've had live music, we've got Lily's Pad, um, food truck, we have ice cream treats in our ice cream shop and um, we've got the playground open, the stores open with lots of good things in it too. Organizers shared that although the Blackberry Festival closed earlier this evening, their Sunflower Festival opens this Friday. She says to check their social media for further details and more events to come this fall. Well, keeping up with a healthy diet on vacation may seem impossible. In fact, one obstacle is that we tend to eat more when we aren't cooking our own meals. Studies show that when we eat outside of our homes, we eat 35 to 45 percent more than usual, with portion sizes being much bigger. Cleveland Clinic's Kristen Kirkpatrick says to start off eating things that will fill you up quickly, like the good stuff, fiber and vegetables. Kirkpatrick also said to try to eat only half of your meal and to save the rest. And remember, it's okay to say to eat something you crave on vacation. If having refined grains such as white pasta is something you really crave, then maybe allow yourself to have that one night. So actually allowing these indulgences can go a long way because then we don't feel the need to have to go just crazy with the indulgences. We can actually factor them in. She also says to try to change something on the menu to make it more healthy, like 
asking for less pasta in a pasta-based dish and to add more vegetables. Coming up at 6, if a deal isn't reached soon with UPS, it could result in the largest strike at a single company in American history. Plus, the AC is about to get a workout this week as temperatures soar. All those details coming up.